So, last half of the day, we're going to talk some board games. I put my picture up here, my favorite board game that we'll talk trash about it. But this is why Adam's been sitting through this whole show, talking trash <laughs> from side to time to time, because he's our board game subject matter expert. Definitely. And- um, te- technically, Nate's favorite board game is not a board game; it's a miniature it's game. True, but <laughs> yep, that is true. We'll put yeah. that out there. <laughs> it's a great miniature game. It's up there with BattleTech and Tech Warrior, but yeah. it, it's not a board game. Right, right, for sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So I, you know, I watch your guys' show, and it's yeah, I realize it's really heavy on comics and and um, console video games. Um, which I enjoy, but I'm way more into board games. So I thought what I would do is talk about um, my favorite board games in order from easily accessible to super deep, you know, Euro kind of really in-depth tough stuff. Sure. Um, so obviously the place to start, everyone knows, is Catan. I mean, even Nate's got Catan back here. Yep. So Yep, somewhere. Um, you can get that at Target now. So go get that. <laughs> Learn it. There you go. Don't get the junior. Get the real one. The junior is good for juniors, though. <laughs> well, that's I true. Say, we it's a, it a is a different game, though. Kids. It is. It's far it is less resource game. management. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's a good, that's you a good intro to make sure game. you got somebody to play with in a few years. Yeah. Um, and they have. I, I know how Nate feels about expansions. They've got so many expansions. <laughs> like the yeah. Two to four players, seafarers. Um, they got a bunch. I've got a bunch of them. Um, so start there. Uh, your next one. Yeah, I just saw ride. somebody. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Corey. Just saw online somebody made a fan-made Settlers of Skyrim. Uh, oh, just oh, like, nice. Like, uh, yeah, Catan, that's cool. except with Skyrim. I've seen a couple Looks cities cool. <clears throat> skin the game with their like, you know, own their local culture. Cities. Yeah, it's cool. that's pretty cool. It's a popular enough game. You can do that now. Um, yeah. Then so, move on to Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride. Um, it's enough like. Hasbro and Parker Brother games that you won't scare off new players, right? But it's a little more in depth, especially if you get like I like the German version. Um, so there's a map of Germany, and you have passengers and cargo. You can play without cool. it, and it's the it's just the base game. But then you add that stuff back in for a little more strategy. Yeah, I gotta say, like we have absolutely. Um, so me and Corey try and get our family. Into, our family's always been into games, event, whether it's whether you're talking cards or regular board games or whatever. When when the family gets together and extend the families around, people are playing games. Not like that, my wife's family and stuff. Yeah. So I, I thought that was the way all like families were. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, exactly. uh, but I gotta say, like you know, when we played stuff like uh, you know Arkham Horror, you know that definitely kind of be a little tough to bring yeah, somebody in on. People are you know not. Not necessarily disliking it, but you know it's a little bit more of a struggle, so to speak, and not quite so much fun. Ticket to Ride is like a hit, yeah. for sure. It's easily explainable. You know, there's enough mechanics that I don't get bored, but you don't lose new people. Yep. Um, if you can, if you still got friends with you after the Ticket to Rides, uh, move on to a uh, a cooperative game. So I would recommend Pandemic. Um, Pandemic Legacy, if you played Pandemic a couple yep. times. Um, and what's nice about that is if you've got a newer gamer, uh, you're all working together. So you can explain what's going on. You can explain what you're planning on doing for the next three turns. And they'll sort of pick up and they don't feel left out. Totally. Can I say, so first of all, I've, I've heard about Pandemic Legacy since the day it came out. Oh, yeah. It says it's great. So I, I definitely want to check it out sometime. But uh, I've got a fresh uh, Risk Legacy game unopened I'd, that i got to find. I do that too. i got to find four or five people that want to play consistently because right. I want to play it straight through. But uh, I did just, just want to say um, that what you hit on there with the cooperative thing. So the my when when my family's around and we're playing games usually my wife doesn't want to play because if we play something for example like risk or something like that you know her kind of lack of understanding about the game she feels like she's at such a disadvantage because the people that are even explaining the rules to her and whatnot have their own kind of you know plan that, that they're not mm-hmm. that they don't want to share and things like that so it was interesting when when i played arkham horror with her the first time she loved it she was like oh you know great you can actually you know you want me yeah. to do good so you're gonna be sure to share everything yeah arkham so. horror and um what's the other one arkham aside no, no that's eldritch the, eldritch horror yeah thank you those are both great cooperative games yeah um a little way more in depth than pandemic um, now, then these next three, after you get through the cooperative, 
um, depending on who you're playing with. Can I interrupt you? Yeah, 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 go ahead. So I, I have never, I've heard the pandemic's great. I've never played it, but it's, it's actually, it's simpler than something like Arkham Horror. Way or simpler. It is? Okay. Um, you'll recognize the board. It's the, it's the, the world. It looks like a risk board. Um, and then you, st- you all start at the CDC in Atlanta. Okay. And then there are, I think four or five, I, I'd have to look at it again to remember exactly diseases and the diseases spawn on their own and you have to, you have to contain them, you have to cure them. And if you let any of them get out too far, they break out into an epidemic and then those epidemics turn into pandemics. pandemics okay. So you're playing against the diseases and the game usually wins. It's, okay. It's, <laughs> tough to, it's, it's pretty tough. Um, there's an ex- and there's an expansion to that too. I know, no. right, right. <laughs> but uh, it bounces out the power a little more, and you can add another player. Um, where was I? You got me off my notes. Sorry, here. sorry. Um, oh, and speaking of, can I can I do a product plug? Oh yeah, yeah. Of so Chicago Scooterist uh, Brian Bedell has he does field notes. It's nice. like under twenty bucks, three pack. Nice analog note taking. Get away from your phone. I buy them. It's awesome. So Scooterist owned business. <laughs> um, okay, so now I would say Dominion, Carcassonne, or Takenoko, depending on your audience. Uh, Dominion, it is essentially a collectible card game, but you don't collect the cards. Um, so start with the base. They've got a, a three standalone expansions. You can start with one of those, and then they've got smaller boosters. Um, and you, you randomize ten cards in the center of the table. And then you guys build your own deck while you're playing, um, and it's a it's a nice deck building technique uh, mechanic. And you have to get victory points, which are cards, but those cards don't do anything. So it's a nice balance over the whole game of getting useful stuff and enough points to win. Okay. So it's it's really well done deck builder. Cool. Um, Carcassonne is a tile building game. You start with a single tile. And you acquire points by completing different buildings, um, uh, yeah, uh, roads, cool. and all kinds of stuff. Um, and it, that's that's just a great, really interesting game. It plays really well with two players and scales up to four quite nicely. Uh, once you get bored of this uh, sort of board building technique, um, you can grab an, a five ten dollar expansion, and, and they'll add a whole new mechanic to the game, and it's fresh all over again. Right. And it's really cheap to get into. We love Carcassonne. Not a, yeah, Carcassonne's so good. Yeah. Um, and then I like Takenoko because it's That's really simple. Kind of like it's probably biggest. What's that? Carcassonne's probably our family's biggest board game. Oh, it's, we play the it's, shit out of it. Yeah, <sighs> and yeah, someone. I mean, our parents someone, both play uh, it. Yeah, yeah. it's it, but it, it's easy to learn. It's hard to master, and it's like sure. what I look for in a game. Yep. Um, and someone on on. Twitter or something played a whole Carcassonne game with every single expansion. Oh, and nice. It was like this. It was the size of a huge room, it's like a gymnasium. I do have just real quick while we're on the subject. This is my my souvenir from France for myself. It's cool. I think the company that makes Carcassonne is just right. south of us here in in New Mexico. Oh, cool. But what was I on? Oh, Takenoko. Um. The board on Takenoko is similar to um, Catan, based on hexes, um, but everything's really cute. You're a Japanese gardener, okay, and you have to take care of a garden so that a bit this big panda can eat, and you grow bamboo, and you nice. complete little missions and get victory points. But uh, that's for someone who wants a cute little game. Strategies there, but right. it's it's not overwhelming. That's cool. Um, and then I would. I'd move on to uh, resource management, and the best one is Puerto Rico. Okay. Um, now you're getting in a little heavier, a little more rule based, and you know, real deep rule set, real real hard strategy. Um, but it's it's one of the best for a reason. Uh, cheap, it's cheap to get into as well. Nice. Like I never even heard of so. Puerto Rico. Oh, Puerto yeah. Rico's great. Yeah. I'll check it out. There's a card game based on it. Um, it's so good it spawned off all these spinoffs that are also really good. Sure. Um, now, if you were going to combine Puerto Rico and Catan, uh, you'd, you'd have Castles of Mad Von Ludwig. Okay. So the, you know, the premise is you're an architect. You're working for this king who's crazy. And 
the king is giving everyone different um, like ideas of what he wants in his castle, and they don't like they you end up making them. They don't make any sense. Sure, you know you have dungeons next to courtyards, and there's all this stuff. Super fun. Mm -hmm. Plays the best with four pe uh, four people. You can do it with two. Is it is it cooperative? It is not cooperative. You okay. are competing against the other architects. How do you win? Like just gain the king's favor or something? Well, or? you th yeah the the king's favor points are the scoring tokens. Okay. Um, and then the game has a finite end, and it's when you run out of uh, certain rooms to build. So whoever made the king happiest. Exactly. When, when and you done? have three. You have three king favorites that you can see, and then you have three that are hidden. Okay. And everyone's building things. Nice. So, um, it has a. If you remember Rampart, the video game. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's similar to that feel when you're building your castle. I've got a non uh, YouTube. Uh, okay story to talk about. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Rampart. Yeah. Um, and then we move <laughs> on to one of my favorite games. And this, you, you, you've got to get a heavy gamer to play this with you because it, when you explain it to somebody, a normal person, they're just not into it. And it's Agricola, which is Latin for farmer. And you, in this game, you're a 16th century French farmer. Okay. And you have to grow your family, feed your family, you never have enough resources. Uh, the you winter comes too soon. Oh, you have kids. Grow your family. Um, it's what that's that's the term they use in the game. Um, so it's turn-based worker placement uh, mechanic, and it's so frustrating because you have you have all these plans to make this perfect farm, and you can't do everything you want. So really, what it comes down to is who can efficiently use all of their workers which is your family, right? Um, to produce the most food and the most victory points. It's, and it's great and frustrating, and I keep playing it all the time. Yeah, it sounds awesome. It's a really well-adapted game for the iPad as well. So okay. if you wanted to practice and uh, get really good at it before you go to your game night, sure. that's one of the best ones. Um, and then I added What's Kavarna because we just started playing that. It's the same company as Agricola. Okay. Um, same basic game mechanic with some extra stuff and a different premise. Uh, you're you're this humanoid race that lives in caves instead of being farmers, but it's it's really great. Um, and that's what I have to for my progression of, of board games. So can I ask you like, Sure. I, I found um, the, I was listening basically to, it's, it's one of the video game podcasts that I listen to that in, they're out of the Twin Cities, they're actually on the radio there, it's Video Game Weekly, they do a board game weekly segment every now and then, and um, they bring in people because Fantasy Flight Games is out of there, they bring in oh, people nice. from there, and uh, you know, the, the I, I've heard a couple different Fantasy Flight employees kind of try and explain that, you know, how to take your family into like, somebody who like, grew up playing Monopoly and Risk and thought they were too long and boring and things like that and to going into, you know, these types of games, you know, it, it really is for most people I think mind blowing, you know, when they yeah. when they have that experience or whatever. And I'm just kind of I just just kind of want to pick your brain a little bit about your history and whatnot. Like I say like myself like growing up and whatnot, um, you know, our we said earlier, you know, our family were huge gamers. They were always playing games, but it was definitely the the Milton Bradley, yeah, the Asbros, main Parker Brothers, yeah, Parker and... Brothers. There you go, and uh, and and we always had a good time doing that. So I, I'm not even talking trash about those. But um, then as a when I was in my twenties, late twenties, I, I worked at a game store that sold European games and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that was right around the same time that when the Xbox 360 was new. They put Carcassonne and Catan and um, in a few other games. Ticket to Ride was on there, I think. And um, really, no, Ticket to Ride wasn't. But Carcassonne and Catan, especially, kind of overlapped when I worked at that game store and kind of saw the the real life versions of these and and, and everything else. I'd always kind of looked at the shelf at Axis and Allies and thought mm -hmm. I liked Risk. I'd like to play that. But never did. You and, would be uh, correct, <laughs> right? Right, and then you know, kind of growing up, um, you know, I I never we, I never played collectible card games. I never played um, Dungeons and Dragons or anything like that. And uh, but the, now, like even when I was working at that game store, I was young and broke and just had a baby and all that stuff, so I couldn't really get all that stuff. And then it was really in my thirties when I was in the Twin Cities around Fancy Flight Games. 
um, because I, I have two good friends that work for them where they kind of expose me to to Fantasy Flight's brand of it anyways, which I feel like is like super heavy on the like technical role playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, almost to a fault it, it, it sometimes. I really like it. I, get, I nerd out on that stuff, so it's not a big deal to me, but it's hard to lots of times get a group. Yeah, the that's true. Interest in that. So, anyways, I just wanted to run through all that and just say, like, what's your history? Like, when did you start playing this stuff? And you know, I mean, has it been something you've done your whole life, or is no. was there a point? Um, yeah. I went to mm. Origins in Columbus, Ohio, um, and I was play- I was playing in a Magic tournament. This was I want to say Fallen Empires era. So, uh, we went there to to do all of this stuff, and they had a bunch of other tournaments at the same time. And there were people playing these games I'd never seen or heard of. Um, and that was really my first introduction to this world sure. of board games. Um, then I went to... I mean, was that... Were you 20 or were you... Uh, I was 16. Okay. All right. Still a teenager. Okay. Yeah, I was pretty young. Gotcha. But then I saw that... You know, that's I didn't know that world was there. Sure. Uh, so when I went back to my local game store, we started playing uh, like Warhammer... And Warhammer 2K and whatever it, it was on at that time, and then we played Necromundum. Those are both miniature games. Right. Um, they get expensive. It's they cause a lot of arguments because it's a lot of line of sight stuff. Sure. And I didn't I didn't really enjoy painting all the miniatures and getting all into it like a lot of the guys did. Right. So that that then moved me more towards in depth board games because uh, you just buy them and you're done. Sure. And I, you know, and I, I wanted the strategy. I wanted the in depthness of it. Um, replayability was really was important to me because I didn't have right. any money. Right. Um, and then, so the first true board game uh, that I played was a game called Robo Rally, and it was actually designed by uh, Richard Garfield when he was at Wizards, and that was his first game. And he tried to get it produced. And it was too expensive, had too many pieces, and they said the rule set was too deep. And so he went back and he's like, all right, I'm going to make a cheap game that's easy to produce, and um, that'll give me enough money to make Robo Rally. And that's where Magic the Gathering came from. Oh, Because wow, okay. all you had to do was print cards. It was way cheaper. Sure. So he did. He made Magic so that he could produce Robo Rally. That's cool. And Robo Rally, is, it's a blast. It's yeah. not Now it's not in-depth enough for me. Sure. But sure. it's still really fun. Nice. Um, the and then the other segment I wanted to do is if you ever see anyone playing Cards Against Humanity and they think it's the coolest, most alternative game, explain to them that that's boring. It's okay. one of the worst games ever made, as a, as far as a game goes. One sure. of the best Kickstarters ever made. Right. But it's a terrible game. Um, instead of those it is games, a terrible game. Yeah, it's fun. It's, but... Yeah, it's fun, and you got to be. I mean, I think you got to be drunk. Sure. You know, you got to yeah, hit, definitely. And somebody talking about sweaty, salty dicks has got to be funny. Or with, or with <laughs> yeah. people that you're uncomfortable having yeah. those conversations with. But as far as as far as gameplay go, right. it's just a shitty apples to apples. Sure. Is there even right. a game to it? Like, what it? The really. people who think it's the funniest when they they've just never thought about <clears throat> masturbating into a pool of children's tears. I think is why that's funny. <laughs> Um, but way yeah. better games Those to people play. people are out there. Yeah. Apparently. Well, that's one of the cards. <laughs> right. um, better game to play, uh, Love Letter. Super okay. simple. I, I want to say it's a 20 or 22 card deck. It's um, a simple rule set, but it's a really well done game. Um, Tempura is a fun little cat game. You know, you feed cats sushi. Th- and this is, these are all card games. Sure. So that you can uh, play real quick. You know, 15, 20 minutes max. You can play them over and over. Um, so tempura is good. You make sushi, feed it to cats. Try not to uh, make the cat sick. Okay. Um, Koo's another right. good one. Does the cat get sick from, like... Too much food. Eating too much too, fish. Too much. Overeating. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so Koo is good. Uh, it's... You read through the rules. You'll get it really fast. Um, there's a there's a traditional card game where you play with a regular deck of cards... And I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a line bluffing kind of game. Figure out who's who. Um, and these are all under 20 bucks. Um, Gloom is a really good card game. The cards are clear, and you stack them on top of each other, and they modify okay. themselves. Um, so that's a little more in-depth than the other ones that I've talked about. Uh, but it's 
it's a great party game. And then Lunch Money, which is pretty old. It's from the 90s. Okay. Uh, it's akin to Uno, um, but you're a, you're a group of like six-year-old girls on a playground fighting over lunch money, and you're hitting each other with chains and bats, and nice. there's a knife. And there's like spinning back fists and all this stuff. And it, all the art's really dark and pretty. Huh. Um, it's all these nasty little six-year-old girls beating the shit out of each other. Nice. So um, <laughs> that so that would be my, my intro to board games. Sure. Cool. No, I appreciate it. The I, I guess I'd right. also like to just kind of randomly, and maybe, it's, maybe this takes too much of a, a thinking it through beforehand, but um, go through the three of us with top three favorite. And this doesn't have to be definitive. This doesn't have to be whatever. But you know what I mean? Just kind of pick pick three games that you're into. Again, kind of aimed at people that maybe aren't so much into games right now and whatnot. So I don't know. What do you – Adam's definitely talked. What do you got, Corey? <laughs> or do you want me to go first? Uh, it's, honestly, I mean, uh, I'm probably the least – experience with the board games of the three of us um well but what have you played i'd say know? i'd say carcassonne Catan, and uh Catan, and um ticket to ride okay the ones right. that we solid choices play with the fan yeah classic. <laughs> i mean for sure those are, there's a reason we have all those on our shelves a risk I, I, risk is probably i don't know i, I like playing risk too yeah, I mean, Risk is a classic good game. Um, it's, a, it's a nice step to access and allies. Right. So, so I've had, got, had quite a bit of... You and Dad played Risk. And I had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, but. yeah, definitely. Yeah, over the past 10 years or whatever. Risk definitely was one of the few board games that I think is better suited on the, the video game consoles and stuff like that. Once it... Does it yeah. all the rolling and stuff, yeah. and the battles instantly happen? You know, it's it it makes the game a totally different game. Oh, um, so I would say I, and yeah. I had crossbows and crossbows and catapults. Oh, that was Did awesome! Play that? that was awesome. That was yeah. dope. Have you ever played crossbows and catapults? I haven't played it in probably <laughs> it's probably been twenty years. Yeah, our our family had that. So you you got <laughs> like plastic bricks, and you would literally construct walls with them around like your castle and then it had a little a catapult and a crossbow that were little plastic pieces with rubber bands oh i think i remember that and had discs and stuff and the, it's and like the, the same era as fireball island yes okay yeah, absolutely yeah, the, that absolutely. wave of video games that had a physical element to them yeah yeah for sure yeah it was fun uh the so i'm gonna throw out this isn't really top favorite ever sort of thing but just again three games that definitely had a big impact on my life um, when I was a little kid, uh, Dark Tower. Oh, I remember Dark so Tower. So my parents had that. Going back and Google the Dark Tower, and the artwork is so awesome. I'll that, check it out. Yeah, the artwork is the greatest. It's like, it was the 80s, but the artwork is so 70s, and like 70s horror, kind of gothic horror stuff. So cool. Uh, you know, you had a little tower that had electronic buttons on it. You pressed it and did things and whatnot and moved move the game along. So... Anyways, it was, it was fun at the time, and, and, and going back and looking at it now, it looks totally cool. Um, second one, uh, and I, I'm, I'm not going to know the name of it, I think it was, it's something like real similar to Dungeon Quest, but it's not Dungeon Quest, it's a... Uh, Dungeon it's Crawler? Hero Quest, or... No, Hero Quest was a CD-ROM. No... So, so you were this, telling me to, that I should get this, right? Yeah, and Matt has it. Uh, what the heck is it called? So there you go. it's it's again it's it's almost uh, not a board game because you're using you're using a board, but you're building tiles on it to build out a dungeon in it, and there's certain doors and things like that, and it's super kind of Dungeon Dragons. Dungeons and hmm. Dragons light. I'm not familiar. Yeah, so that one person has a book and is telling you the story, and as you go through doors and whatnot, then, okay, you can see the enemies that are in there and that sort of thing. Um, driving me crazy. I can't remember it. I was thinking about it. One of, one of your favorites, huh? 
when you remember yes. to put it in the comments. Yeah, yeah. It, it was really, really a great game. And then um, finally, uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault. I'm, I'm a big Star Wars nerd. Imperial Assault is, uh, again, super overly complicated rules to the point where I still don't have them straight myself. In, you know, And I play it with groups of people all the time. It is role-playing game-ish, so it it's starts... Miniature. Yeah, it starts kind of right at the end, right after uh, Return of the Jedi, where you're on the moon on Endor, and you're, there's groups of stormtroopers around the moon there that don't know that they've lost yet. And so the first mission is to kind of go shut them down. And then it's things happen throughout the mission, and then when you get to the end of each mission, there's a... If the, if the Rebels won, turn to page 7. If the Empire won, turn to page 14 or whatever. So if you have a group of people to play that story through, you do that through six, seven missions or whatever. It is a great game. Yeah, and your, your guys level up, things like that. So um, to me, it just... I, I, if you took the Star Wars skin off of it, would I care so much? Probably not, if I'm honest. But uh, <laughs> but that does it for me. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm right in there, and the game is... Is just as in depth enough to me to kind of hit that the RPG nerd side of it as well. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Um, I would, I would say Agricola is my all time favorite. I play it a lot, and I re, I play it by myself a lot. There's a solo version okay. of the game that you can play. Cool. Um, and then I would probably say Lords of Vegas, which is, uh, kind of like Monopoly mechanic, but you're playing on the Vegas Strip. And you play through the history of Vegas. Nice. Um, and then... Is there my, a time aspect to it? There's no time aspect no, okay. to it. But as you improve the casinos, they go from like the Bugsy Malone okay. style era to the modern era. Nice. So you, as, you, as they build up, there's a perceived... They modernize. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the third game is going to be a little weird. It only exists in... Um, video game format, but it's a board okay. game, and it's called New World Colony. Okay. And you, I don't think we'd be able to play as a regular board game because there's a market mechanic to it, where resources, the more you sell them, the cheaper they get. Or no, the, sorry, yeah, the, I got that right. The more you sell sure. them, the cheaper they get, and the more you buy them, the more expensive they get. So you'd have to calculate this whole like stock market uh, mechanic. And I wouldn't be able to do it right. like on the fly. Right. But on this video, it's on the iPhone, I iPad, it, I, I'm sure it's on the Android. Um, but it's a board game that only exists as an app, and it's a it's it's great. That's I, cool. Two to four player. What's it called again? New World Colony. Okay. Two to four player. Um, it's conquering, resource management, all wrapped up into one, and it's great. Awesome. Check it out. That's all I got. New World what? New World Colony. Are you looking it up? <laughs> he's, he's nailing it. <laughs> all right, cool. Nice. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for having yep, me. Yep, that's been uh, episode 40, Comically Gaming. Everybody, thanks for stopping by. Uh, Corey, you got anything else? Doesn't look like it's on Android. <clears throat> no. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, no, that's it. All right. Have a great week. All right. Later, everybody. Thanks for having me, guys. Later. Later.